Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is our year to shine. Sorry I took a little hiatus there, but you can hear it in my voice. I've been sick, unfortunately, um, but I'm slowly getting on the mend and being in bed a lot, I've had a chance to really start our new book, The Joy of Less. It's by Francine J and she's known as Miss Minimalist. It's the Minimalist Guide to Declutter, Organize, and Simplify. And it's an easy read so far. If you got your hands on it, it's I'm already, I don't know, at least a quarter of the way through. So it's it's not difficult to read it. It's very conversationalist sort of style. So I'm enjoying it so far. And I, I guess as I'm thinking about how to present it to the channel, it's not as concrete as perhaps some of the other subjects that we've talked about. So I decided tonight on this video that I would talk about the first section of the book, which is really getting us into thinking about all the stuff we have and, and really thinking about what is stuff and what kind of mental energy does having clutter around add to us. She has a chapter called Less Mess, Less Stress. And I'm thinking about some of the things in this book really tie in well to our Simple Abundance year last year because that author, Sarah Bond Bronick, <clears throat> did talk about how sometimes your surroundings can definitely mirror what is going on with you emotionally. And especially where I've been sick, I'm glad you can't see my kitchen behind me because I've been sort of lax about dishes and such, but I'll, I'll catch up with those things. Um, but one challenge that I wonder if you can actually do, because I was thinking about everything as I, the other night I'm brushing my teeth and I'm looking in and I'm seeing how many hair elastics I have and stuff. She wants us to sit down and write down everything that you own. <laughs> Can you imagine, because I'm thinking about like this hutch behind me, I have drawers in it and I have paper clips, I have stickers, I, I mean, I have, I have so much stuff. But she makes some good points. How easy would it be for you to all of a sudden just drop everything and just move across the country if you had some amazing opportunity? So the trade-off of having a ton of stuff versus being a minimalist means that you are tied down with a lot of your stuff. I know I've thought of that as well. There have been times before where I thought like, Ugh, it would be so hard to move, you know, if anything happened. Moving is not always the easiest anyway, but there have been times where I've owned so much more than I own now and I still own a lot of stuff. I don't think I acquire stuff like I'm not a huge consumer, so I don't think that I have like a shopping addiction or anything. I, I think I keep things for a long time as well. Like this shirt that I'm wearing is a good example. I've definitely had this shirt for at least 12 years. Like I don't really buy new clothes a lot of the time, so I might not be the average person because uh, Francine does have a whole section about how it's hard to be a minimalist in a consumer driven world because we get this message of keeping up with the Joneses and and we've talked recently in another book about comparing ourselves to other people and sort of like how do we measure up and and are we good enough and do we have uh, the things that we were told as kids meant that we were successful and she really wants us to know that we are not what we own, which I've been totally singing in my head. There's a song from the musical Rent where they say, you are what you own. So they're talking about uh, living in America and how it is kind of like that, where you're sort of measured by what kind of car you drive or maybe your clothes or what hairstyle you go with or the hair salon where they do your highlights or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a consumer driven sort of thing, but it's also an image thing as well. So what do you think of when you think about being a minimalist? Do you think about people that just walk around with a backpack and that's all they own and they just couch surf? I think there's a, a degree of 
minimalism that she's discussing in this first section where there are some people that live that way but then there are other people like think of my situation where if I go into my kitchen like this is actually a good example it's right here I have a blender bottle right here and I like them um, and I'm looking in my cabinet and I'm thinking hmm, I have three of those do I really need three <laughs> Although I suppose I could rationalize two because one might be in the dishwasher. Yeah, I definitely have a lot of water bottles and things, but when I think about how that makes sense, it might not make sense to me now. Like some of your things might be a mirror of your life in a certain time period. Because when I was looking at the water bottles and things like that, I was thinking like, all right, well, I had one water bottle that went with me to the chorus rehearsals, and then I had another water bottle that went to me with me to this part-time job, and then I had a water bottle that went in my lunch box, and I, you know, so I had all these different sort of drink things, or like I was always bringing something in the car, and but now I don't know that I need that many of them, but letting go. That's what this book helps us do. It's not necessarily in this first section. We'll get more into that in the next section. But letting go is, you know, it's a part of it. Because I'm thinking, well, I guess I would save this one because it's my favorite color and maybe I'd save another one. I don't know, I'm, I'm struggling as I'm looking around. She wants us to list out everything that we own. And I have a lot of stuff. But I don't have as much stuff as I had a year ago, so I definitely have already pared down. She talks about storage as well. I do have a storage unit again. Remember how, if you were watching my channel last year, you knew that I was trying to get out of a storage unit last year, and I did get rid of something like seven or eight tubs and found places for things in my uh, other living space that I didn't think I had. But now I have another storage unit because I moved to a very tiny place. So how much mental energy are we using when there's mess and stress and uh, just clutter around? Think about, because she talks about having a, like all clean surfaces, which I can't imagine because look right here. I always have stuff, you know, like I have like little things on the even besides what you can see here in the background, I have like a little heart that rings. <laughs> like, so I, I tend to be like decorative. So I have stuff like little knickknacks and things around. But she suggests that everything be totally, like all surfaces be bare. I wonder if that would like apply to up here too. Like if all of these cubbies are supposed to be bare. <laughs> Actually, I suppose a minimalist probably wouldn't even have as much furniture as I have. So maybe they would just get rid of this thing. <laughs> So as we take inventory of all of our things, we're also taking inventory of why do we have all these things? Do we really need them? What is the purpose? Do we love certain things? Like remember we talked about Marie Condon last year and I forget exactly what she says when she's wanting you to kind of determine if you're ready to let something go. It's like you hold it, I think, right near your heart, right? And you sort of ask if it's served a purpose or if it's like ready to move on. So we'll be getting more into that, I'm sure, later. And I don't know if she mentions anything about Marie Kondo in this book. I haven't seen anything yet, so. So also, think about all the time you would have on your hands if you were not dusting knickknacks or you weren't, um, like think the money I'd have if I didn't have that storage unit. I could start a vacation fund or something. So she's trying to get us to think about the benefits and how much we're giving to the stuff that we have. So less stuff means more freedom because you could just pick up and move across the country at any given moment if you don't have all this stuff weighing you down. Like she definitely talks about it being like this this weight that you have on you for sure. <laughs>
there's a there's a statement here unfortunately simply stuffing everything into drawers baskets and bins won't do the trick so yeah and she's referencing the fact that this book is not about getting organized and buying containers and uh, sorting things out this is actually about maybe you do get a container to kind of like hold something but you might go and see, like, I don't need to have 10 spoons. Like the most number of people that I would have over is maybe four. So you part with some of it. Or she does say that you could have storage. Like she talks about getting things further away from your sort of like use area. So say, like I'm thinking about like some of the cooking stuff that I have in storage. Like, I'm not regularly making lasagna and stuff, so I have some of those things over there, like the corningware, in storage, and I can go get them if I need them, but it, I don't I don't have them right in my living space because it's something rare that I'm not using. Could I get rid of it? Probably, because you know what? I could go to the grocery store and get one of those. I suppose it's not um, very sustainable, but I could get one of those sort of foil ones as well. I wanted to just make lasagna so detaching from your stuff this is about letting go many of us look back at the young adult days as one of the happiest most carefree times in our lives because no matter where we were living sometimes with two or three other people we had little disposable income but no matter we couldn't afford designer clothes, fancy watches, or electronic gadgets, but all of our possessions fit into a few crates and we didn't have to worry about car repairs, home maintenance, or even going to the dry cleaners. What little stuff we had took a back seat to our social lives. Yeah, think about a kid, although I do think that kids are really into their stuff. We're in this consumer-driven world, so I think kids are even victim to that too. So in the grand scheme of things, our stuff is not that important, right? Remember when we talked about in Simple Abundance last year, it was the Donner Party, right? That was passing over to the West and there was a very affluent family and then there were some not so affluent families, but when it came down to life or death, it didn't matter who had more because the stuff didn't really matter. Oh, being a good gatekeeper. So. This is about making choices when you're out and about and you're thinking about bringing more stuff in. You have to make room, first of all, before you bring anything more in. And I, I forget if she says there's like a law of something comes in and something goes out. I believe that was what it was. And then also we have to think about why before we buy. You know, a year from now, is this going to have served a purpose? Will it have brought me joy? Or am I just buying it as a status sort of have-to thing? Do I have to always have the brand new gadgets? Or can I just work with what I have and get, get it fixed? I think I was brought up, I mean, we were a middle class, but I never really felt like I didn't feel a deficit as far as not feeling like I, like feeling like I wanted things but that I didn't have them. Like I didn't have that feeling, but we certainly were not rich by any, any means. Um, but we were comfortable and I feel like there was enough. And if we wanted something, it usually came for a major holiday um, or we, we had jobs early on, so we worked hard. Um, and where was I going with that? Oh, I know what I was gonna say just that like I've never really cared that much about well I don't want to drive some sort of like jalopy car that like everybody here is coming and it like looks horrible but as far as like I don't care if I'm driving a used car or a new car like I've never felt like I have to have the brand new car I'm not a super technology person so I don't run out and get the next iPhone and all that it's just not me and I you know I don't buy a whole lot in general um, so maybe I'm a little abnormal in terms of our society but I I feel fortunate that I just sort of had maybe a simpler upbringing and and I didn't I didn't acquire that feeling of having to have status through having like the best car or you know 
a huge house. We didn't live in a mansion or anything, but it was comfortable, big. And we had, you know, like my dad furnished the basement and we had lots of cozy spaces. It was a nice, nice, comfortable um, growing up space. Okay, and as far as the space that you're gonna be saving when you uh, empty out a, like a, a flat surface, then it's, th that's where you're gonna be able to do things. So say you, um, you know, if I totally cleaned off my desk, so I had nothing here, excuse me, then I could bring out an art project and do stuff and then, then I would put that stuff away when I'm done. So it gives you more room to do things. So she's talking about, she's trying to sell us on the benefits of downsizing. <laughs> Enjoy without owning. Yeah, so you can go and do things and experience things through others as well and not necessarily have to own things. And the joy of enough. So I like this, the joy of less. So the joy of having enough, we talked so much about the word enough in our first book this year, which was called Enough. And there is joy in having enough. And I just mentioned my childhood and how we did have enough. I didn't feel like a lack of wanting. I didn't feel like there was an excess. It was a comfortable enoughness. Yeah, so I think that that can definitely bring joy. Once we've covered our basic needs, our happiness has very little to do with the amount of stuff we own. That's true. If you're trying to survive, then it's hard to find joy if you're you know, trying to live out of a box and you don't have what you need. So there's definitely joy in having at least enough, right? And then living simply. Didn't we talk, there's a bird that's so happy right now. Didn't we talk all last year during our simple abundance year about simplicity was one of the principles. It's right on my thumbnails there with all the other things. And look at this wonderful moment here of this bird. Oh, he's gone. Just hearing that bird sing. I have the windows open, which is also nice. So that is a simple pleasure for sure. Grandma sort of, or no, sorry, grandma. Oh my goodness. It's Gandhi, not grandma. <laughs> Gandhi said, live simply so that others may simply live. Hmm. Yeah, Francine does have a lot of quotes in here. She usually starts her chapter with the, with the quotes. So basically this first section is kind of getting us ready, I think, for what we're going to be doing. So the I didn't really list off all of the chapter names, but it's basically, it's talking about stuff it's talking about you not being your stuff like you're you you're not your stuff it's about having less stress by having less stuff it's by having more freedom of just being able to jump up and go and change your life in a moment's notice and and then we get into the detaching of our stuff and making sure that we're making better decisions when we buy things enjoying without owning you can definitely do that. And then the joy of having enough and just living simply. I hope you take a look at these chapters. They're, like I said, very easy. You could probably get through that first section that I just talked about, maybe an hour. I mean, maybe not even. So it's a quick read and we'll go into the next section on my next video, which is gonna be about streamlining. And that's gonna be where we have to decide when something should be trash, treasure, or transfer. So that's when I start to think about the, the home shows where they go in and they, they have people decide and they have to throw them in the various bins and decide what they're gonna donate or trash. So you might have to make some tough decisions. But for now, our first assignment is to really start looking around, taking stock. I don't think I could personally list every single thing down to the hair elastics and paper clips and all that that I own. But I am already starting to look around, like I said, when I opened my my closet or my cupboard, you know, and I saw how many of the water bottles I have, I thought, all right, well, that's a good example right there of something to start with. So for now, we're just doing a survey, so don't don't freak out. And you will always be in control of how much purging or 
uh, becoming a minimalist, you will be, I think I'm going to be somewhere in the middle. I don't know that I will be somebody living out of a backpack, but I'm hoping that this book will encourage me to, to pare some things down. So anyway, that's my ramblings on the first section of this book. I hope you pick it up and um, just a nice little spring read. Thank you for being here as always and hopefully I will see you again. I feel like I'm on the mend so hopefully I will be able to be back with you soon for the next video on our book The Joy of Less for April 2021. Love to you all. Bye-bye.